What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Jake Shavink here. And yes, we are bringing back the prospect breakdowns as we inch ever closer uh, to the 2021 NFL Draft. Today, we are looking at North Texas wide receiver Jalen Darden, as voted on by the good folks on Twitter. Um, so if you want to request a prospect to be broken down here on the channel, just drop it in the comments or head over and follow me on Twitter and wait for the next poll. Uh, commenting probably a little easier for you. Um, but yes, if you're returning um, and you haven't subscribed, maybe throw a subscribe down. Uh, lots of future good content coming to you. And uh, maybe drop a like if you enjoy this video. So um, yeah, Jalen Darden. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to get into some measurables. We're going to get into some strengths and weaknesses. And as always, we'll get into a little film and then we'll wrap it up with a little projection, his role at the next level. So let's dive in. All righty, measurables for Jalen Darden here, obviously. You know, on the smaller side, a, a lot of these types in this draft, um, you know, 5'9", 174 pounds, definitely on the lighter side, definitely on the shorter side. Um, that obviously thrusts him immediately into what many believe to be a slot or gadget type of role at the next level. Um, pretty productive career at North Texas uh, for Jalen Darden. Uh, career 230 receptions for 2,782 yards and 38 touchdowns. A lot of touchdowns. It's good to see. Uh, 12.1 yards per catch. Actually averaged 16.1 yards per catch his final season. A really impressive bump there uh, as a senior. And you see his senior stat line there at the bottom. 74 catches, 1,190 yards, 19 touchdowns. That is a whopping number uh, in 2020. Up there with the ranks of guys like Jamar Chase back in uh, 2019. And then obviously Devonta Smith, the Heisman winner. So right there in terms of that production. Um in terms of finding the end zone. All right, strengths and weaknesses here. Um, we've talked about a couple of the other wide receivers. I think Darden's got a little bit more weaknesses than, than say, Eskridge and Bateman, who have been broken down on this channel before. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, strengths. He dominated Conference USA competition. Uh, it looked like a clinic for him, really, uh, to show his, his show off his strengths. Um he just outclassed uh, defensive backs, especially in 2020, um, throughout his career. So, real jitterbug in space. Uh, he's really crisp with his lateral movement skills, and you'll, you'll see him often make the first defender miss, uh, which is impressive. I mean, again, when you have these types of receivers, you want to see that. You want to see a guy who can it, be that run-after-catch guy, you know, the gadget player who you can ask to make a man miss and, and get into space and make plays. He has the play speed, definitely, to threaten vertically. I wouldn't say it's top-end play speed at the level of, let's say, like Jalen Waddle, but I think it's very good play speed, and I think he has enough to threaten vertically down the field. Uh, he's definitely explosive after the catch, has that short area burst uh, that we talk about a lot, um, really with a lot of run players who run after the catch uh, in this class. There's a lot of them, but... Again, Darden's up there with the best of them in, in terms of that uh, explosiveness uh, immediately after the catch. He is a hands catcher. He plucks the ball, football uh, out in front of him when it's within his frame. Um, we'll get into a little bit what happens without, when it's out of his frame uh, as we move to weaknesses. But when, it, when it's in his frame, when it's in his reach, uh, he's a good hands catcher. Um, has good stop-start acceleration. I, I think you'll see him on film here as we dive in there. Stops on a dime. He'll be able to start back up really quickly. Ha Obviously showing off, again, that explosiveness, that burst, um, you know, immediately after he stops. Has the punt kick return ability. I think that's pretty obvious as well with guys like that. He needs to be able to contribute in that area uh, at the next level if he wants to carve out a, a bigger role. And he does. I, I think when you look at vertical routes for him, he definitely hits another gear. And, and you can see that, like, little jump and acceleration and, and that build-up speed that he can do. So the weaknesses... Yeah, I mean, again, with guys that are smaller, you know, you're going to see smaller catch radiuses. There are exceptions, but unfortunately for Darden, it's, he really isn't the exception here. Definitely struggles to make catches away from his frame. He, when he goes up to high point the ball, you see a lot of whiffs, um, and you see a lot of drops when he tries to go low to the ground and make plays. Uh, there's a few concentration drops as well on tape uh, that are a little concerning. Yeah, catching through contact, it, it's tough for him. Uh, he, he lacks that grip strength to hold on the football through collisions over the middle of the field. Uh, and yeah, his route tree, while what he did was effective, uh, a lot of goes, a lot of speed outs, a lot of hitches, and a lot of bubble screens. 
Um, that was really what Darden did in that North Texas offense. Um, and you talk about it right below, contextualizing the production. A lot of touchdowns, a significant percentage of the touchdowns that Darden had in, in 2020 were busted coverages, uh, which is a little concerning. And a lot of his production comes on those bubble screens, tunnel screens, where he can make those plays after the catch against obviously inferior competition, um, at least relative to his skill set. Uh, you'll see him kind of push off on deep routes. And that's something he probably won't get away with uh, at the next level. Um, it, it's very evident. And, and I do have a play on tape. You'll be able to see that. And yeah, I think as much of a jitterbug as he is, I think he gets a little off balance, gets a little out of control when he starts to string moves together after the catch. So you'll, you'll see him lose balance a bit. So ultimately, yeah, Darden has some really exciting strengths, but again, there are definite weaknesses to his game, which kind of pigeonhole him into just a, a, a certain role at the next level, more of a smaller role contributor type player. So let's go and dive over into the film. All right, we're going to look into some film here for Jalen Darden. You can see him at the bottom of the screen to start here. Just a little slant route, and you see that short area burst, that explosiveness, and how how different it looks you know, for him relative to competition. You see him a little gadget play here, come at the top of the screen. Nice little play call, but again, using that burst, that explosiveness to his advantage. Like this play a lot, you'll see it up top here. Uh Darden, definitely a guy who's going to get pushed to the sideline like this, but again, makes a good catch, plucks the football well. You'll see that short area burst again, that explosiveness. Really outclasses this conference in terms of his ability as a playmaker. Here you go, another little speed out for him, but again, Jitterbug makes the defender miss. Easy touchdown for him there. Here's another one, a little free release up the seam here. And yeah, I mean, you could talk about it, but again, he he's definitely able to create space for himself, create opportunities to score after the catch. I mean, look, he, he's bracketed here. Uh, it, it looks like he is. And again, just stop-start acceleration, able to create something there for himself. So again, here, bottom of your screen, you're going to see nice little job there, like chopping his feet. And look at that. Yeah, easily make players miss. Uh, it, it's, it's really easy for him, uh, ultimately. And you know, you, you see that explosiveness, that lateral quickness, you know, he's agile, you know, he's the type of player who, you know, as long as his, you know, he holds up durability wise, I, I think he's carving out a slot gadget role for himself because of what he can do after the catch. All right, another one here from the slot and you'll see him, you know, use that speed, that explosiveness, get behind corner there and makes a heck of a play good tracker of the football too he does track the football well vertically um sometimes doesn't adjust as well but there you go again one defender miss and, and there he goes he's off of the races that's a really big gain on these bubble screens but you see how well he operates look at that a couple guys miss there how much he can produce on these bubble screens and how much that contributed his production here he's just hitting another gear again uh, getting covered in the slot with a guy who just cannot run with him. Easy touchdown for him. Bottom of your screen here, this is what's nice to see, is you see him kind of work back to the football. Doesn't finish this catch, but it's good to see him helping out his quarterback. Here, uh, want to slow it down for you for sure. Um, didn't get a really good angle of this on the tape. I think the guy running it from the the full all-22 angle in this this. Uh, end zone cam just didn't get enough of it but he does a little glide step here to kind of freeze this first defender um closest to him and he's able to skirt by him and, and make easy work and, and score there ultimately these last two clips against uh against charlotte but you do see you'll see him get this it's a nice little jab step and that's not something you see as often from him a little jab step inside Again, against Charlotte, but there's the push-off. If you don't see it, it's really subtle. Go back here just one more time, promise. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, you'll see him kind of push off here. There's the push. And again, makes a heck of a diving catch. It's a great catch, but ultimately he's winning there. He's pushing off. Again, another jab step. And, and again, his speed is explosiveness. No match for the defender there. 
So ultimately, where do we see Jalen Darden going in the draft? What do we project him as? That's that's the biggest thing we want to get out of this video. Again, I think the strengths are evident. I, I think you see, you know, how much, how, how loose-hipped, how twitchy of an athlete he really is. And, and that's exciting to see. Um, but in a draft where there are a lot of elite playmakers who can play slot receiver, talking about Elijah Moore, Rondell Moore, Kadarius Toney, you know, he's going to be in that tier with guys like Demetric Felton, Cade Johnson, Tutu Atwell, guys like that who also have that speed, who, you know, some of them are, are, are just overall better catchers of the football and, and can make more plays outside their frame. But obviously with Darden, you see the ability to be that gadget player, you know, maximize him with his run after catch ability. Ultimately, he's probably a day three player just because of how deep this class is really at wide receiver. But there will be teams that see him as a gadget player that can fit him into their offense. Ultimately, how much did competition help him and, and will that be an issue at the next level? It could be. Again, I think a lot of times when he saw contact, you know, it was the results were not good. Um, you know, whether it be down the field, whether it be, you know, over the middle. So something he's definitely got to work on. He's definitely got to concentrate more, work through contact and, and be effective in that in that way. Otherwise, you know, he'll he'll obviously be really limited to to more of a gadget role. Slot receivers still have to be tough over the middle of the field. They got to be tough junk catchers as well. Um, obviously, a lot of them can separate, but still, you're, there, there's going to be contact. This is a contact sport, obviously. So, so for Darden, I, I see him more as a slot gadget, more of a gadget player. Where again, like I said, like we've over and over gone, you can maximize that run after catchability, that explosiveness, that twitchiness, lateral movement toolbox that he has. And to really make him an effective player. So a lot of his production at the next level is going to be there. And yeah, we'll we'll see who drafts him. And hopefully it's an offense that can maximize his strengths. So thank you guys uh, for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got a little something out of it. Um, and yeah, like I said in the, at the start of the video, if you have a prospect that you want to see broken down on the channel, just drop it in the comments. Um, yeah, and... Packers fans, Colts fans, draft fans, NFL fans. There's a lot in store for you guys coming very soon. Um, hopefully a video a day leading up to the NFL draft. So make sure to come back. Make sure to subscribe. Maybe turn the bell on for notifications. And if you enjoy the video, like it. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Farewell.